Hi everyone, it's Kino here. Welcome to day 14 of this Ashtanga Yoga Challenge. Thanks so much for joining me on this challenge journey. I really appreciate it. And thanks for all of your wonderful feedback on yesterday's video and the talk at the end. It really means a lot to me that you're interested in the spiritual journey of yoga, not just the physical poses. So the vibe that you might be feeling today is kind of chill and relaxed. So today I want to introduce you to what I think about as the softer side of the Ashtanga Yoga method. In the traditional practice of Ashtanga Yoga, as I learned it from my teachers in India, one of the things that probably most distinguishes the Ashtanga Yoga practice is the rigorous nature with which all of the asanas are done. So that many people actually think that that is the method. Well, the method is actually not just the rigor or the series of poses, but instead the method of the physical practice of asana in the Ashtanga Yoga method is rooted in the teaching of Patanjali. Patanjali is the author of the Yoga Sutras, which were written or you could even say codified about 2000 years ago. And the word Ashtanga comes from Ashtao, which means eight, plus Anga, which means limbs. So there are eight limbs to the practice of Ashtanga Yoga. We are primarily concerning ourselves with the limb of asana. Within the limb of asana, traditionally it's said that three elements have to be present. And this is the element of mind control or mental focus, sometimes uh, entered through the practice or understanding of teaching of drishti, as well as the, so this is sort of the first element that must be present within asana. Or, focusing on some aspect of controlling or stabilizing the mind, keeping the mind really balanced. Then there's the tool of asana itself. When you work with asana itself, the main goal is to bring increased sensation and feeling in the body so that you're able to unify the conscious and the subconscious mind and enter a very deep state of communion with the self so that you can perfect the tool of self-observation, drawing the indriyas or the organs of the senses away from the external world into the internal world. Finally, we have the tool of the breath. And the breath is there to create emotional balance. And the breath is also the thread between the conscious and the subconscious mind, or what you could call the thread between matter and spirit. So when we're working with even the physical practice of yoga, uh, using asana as a foundation for the spiritual journey, we have many access points to the deep work that is the essence of yoga. So for today's practice and today's journey into the challenge, I want to invite you to explore what you can think about as the softer side of the Ashtanga Yoga method. In this softer side, we're not going to be going through the rigorous jumping here and jumping there that you might be familiar with as the traditional format of the Ashtanga method. Instead, I am presenting to you the format of Ashtanga Yoga in what I call a deconstructed manner. The asana of the day is called Marichasana A. And every asana has a lesson and a logic within itself. And by understanding the lesson and the logic within the asana of the day, or within any asana really, you can dive down into a more kind of intimate relationship between breath, body, and mind, which is the essence of the Ashtanga method. I want to encourage you to think outside the box and really kind of question the idea and of, of what is Ashtanga yoga and really what is yoga. Is there a softer side to yourself as well as a more uh, you know, active or dynamic side to yourself? And then how can these find balance within the expression of your life and perhaps even of your daily practice? So, Mari Jasana A is one of the first postures where we are encouraged to bind the hands around the back. And we'll take a look at that very shortly. And when you move into Mari Jasana A, you're combining a forward bend movement, a hip flexion, and an internal rotation of the shoulders. So these are kind of big movements that all come together to create the asana called Mardi Chasana A. As I've done with you the other days, I'm going to show you the asana first, and then we're going to kind of go into that softer exploration. So in Mardi Chasana A, the way that you work this asana, just to break down the basics before we start to explore that softer side, we have the hip flexion, 
the forward bend, and then the internal rotation to bind the hands, and then the fold forward. And so this is the essence of the asana. Now, let's break down the tools of how we get there. So we're gonna start off with the hip flexion. You'll notice that over to the side, I have some blankets and my meditation cushion, which I'm gonna use as a bolster. For today's uh, movement, I want you to bring either yoga block or some blankets. And you notice I'm not on a yoga mat. You don't need a yoga mat for this, but if you wanna put a mat down, if you feel it more comfortable than the floor, then do that. But if you're, if you're on a carpet at home, then that's totally fine as it is. Now, I want you to sit on your feet and open the knees a little bit wide and then slide a pillow, bolster, some yoga blocks in and then exhale and you're gonna fold your chest on and then try to avoid opening the knees too much like this, but let the knees kind of slide in. And if you want something soft, just go ahead and slide over and we're gonna hold this for about five breaths. And as you're here, I want you to think about your torso sliding between your thighs. So then you start off in this kind of wide supported child's pose to encourage a hip flexion and get that rounding in the lower back that will help elongate the back muscles, all right? So enjoy this little moment of relaxation. As I said, we're exploring kind of the softer side of the Ashtanga method today, understanding that when you can relax your mind and body, then and everything starts to open and kind of fall into synchronicity. And we all have days where we can't hit it too hard. So if you try to hit it super hard every day, you'll exhaust the body and exhaust your potential really for doing the practice as a daily practice. Let's stay for about two more breaths like this. And then let's go for one more breath. Remember, you can do that deep breathing with sound. It might help concentrate your mind a little bit. Let's do one more breath. And then inhale, come on back into the center. And now I want you to push those blankets over, come up on the knees and slide forward, all right? So as you're sliding forward, now we're in the elevated version of Virasana position. You can lean a little forward and grab your butt muscles and move them over and we'll stay here for about five breaths just to get a little rolling of your thigh bones inward. All right, so draw the navel a little bit in and again, we'll stay for five. One, two, take a moment and feel a deep sense of calm and peacefulness. Three, four, how you feeling? Five, that's good. Okay, now I want you to bend your right knee, bend your left knee up like this, open the knees a little bit. So when you open the knees, I want you to have the feeling as though your chest is gonna slide forward. So watch your feet. If the feet are too much externally rotated, that won't help you out here. Instead, so try to keep them a little pointed forward. Little out is okay, we, you know, we're humans. Then draw the navel in, and I want you to lean a little forward. And as you lean forward, all right, I want you to really feel your hip is moving back and your chest moving forward. So just kind of lean forward and down. So now you're moving your torso between the thighs and we'll hold this for about five breaths. One, two, how's it going? Three, four, almost there. Looks good. Five, okay, now I'm gonna straighten your legs. And drape your head down, and you can just layer your head down and just kind of relax. And then really just elongate the spine. So now you're push that little pillow over to the side, and we're going to do the hanging forward fold for about five breaths. One. Two, just building up all the pieces that we're going to need for Marie Chasana A. Three, almost there. Calm, quiet mind. So you enter into kind of a soft and meditative space. Let's go for one more breath. Good, then bend the knees. Let your chest drape over your thighs. Then inhale, hips back and up again. And we'll just let it relax five more breaths. One, two, keep it calm. Three, no goal. Four, 
Almost there. And that's five, very good. Let's move that little cushion over to the side. Walk your hands forward. And now we're gonna do downward facing dog. So just walk it on back to downward dog. Send your hips back and up, and then drop the head down. One, the navel is in, the shoulders roll open. Two, three, get that feeling of the shoulders rolling open, the collarbone is broad. Four, relax the nervous system. And five, now let's sink the knees down. I want you to slide forward, cross your feet. And draw the navel a little bit in, okay? Grab those blankets and we're gonna sit up on the blankets. So I'm drawing the navel in, come up, sit, reach forward. Mm -hmm. So Dandasana position to start, the navel is in, the chest is up, deep breath. One, it's looking good, steady breathing, two, three, nice and easy, four, almost there, five, now Paschimottanasana, our forward fold, pivot a little bit forward and draw your navel in, hold on to your big toes or you're welcome to use a strap if that feels better for you, inhale, prepare, firming up the muscles of the quadriceps, good. All right, then exhale, fold, and fold it on down. The navel is in, deep breaths. One, get the forward bend established. Two, looks good. Three, tuck the head under. Four, almost there. Five, good job. Inhale, let's lift the head up. Exhale here, then inhale, come all the way up. Now, I want you to cross your feet. We're not gonna jump back, all right? I want you to cross your feet and come on down to child's pose. You can move your blankets on over to the side and slide it on back. Now we're gonna work with the internal rotation of the shoulders. So this is a little bit like thread the needle, but also a little di different. So you're gonna keep yourself back with your hips resting down and then exhale, glide that left shoulder under. And I want you to feel as though that right shoulder really curls under like this. Keep your collarbone broad by reaching out through your left, by the end of the left collarbone, okay? If your child's pose is not comfortable, you can sit up and do it like this. It's also good. All right, now the next stage. Lift your right arm up and internally rotate the shoulder and just drape it forward. We're gonna hold this for five breaths. One, relax the mind, relax your body. Two, three, getting all the pieces in that nice, easy way. Relax the mind, four, one more breath, five. Good job. Take your right arm down. Inhale back to the center. I'm gonna switch the sides. I'm just gonna turn around here. You don't have to turn around if you can see me okay where you are. And then exhale, take that right arm down and then let's internally rotate the shoulder. Try to keep your knees as close together as possible. Inhale, left arm up, internally rotate and drop. Good. Relax and hold for five. One. Remember, if it's a little difficult for you, you're gonna lift the hips a little bit up. Two, keep breathing. Three, almost there. Four, one more breath. Five, that's good. Release that left arm. Mm -hmm. Inhale back to the center, and now cross your feet underneath you. Good, okay, so as you draw the navel in, you're gonna stretch out the legs, I'm gonna show you from the front side. Now, hold, draw the right knee up, and here's where you might want to grab those blankets and sit up on the blankets, or your cushion again, depending on how much help you need to elevate the hips. Draw the right knee out to the side, and don't worry about trying to bind your hands, okay? I want you to fold forward with both hands, and again, your chest 
center to the left knee. And now exhale, just drop the head and drape your body a little bit over to the left side. Good, and we'll stay for five. One, two, please don't worry about binding your hands. Watch to make sure the knee's not dropping out and keep it close to your shoulder. That's good. Four, keep working, almost there. Five, good job. Inhale, straighten the arms. Exhale here. We're gonna switch the sides. Good. So you're using the blanket to elevate the hips a little bit and then hands forward. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, fold. Don't worry about the bind right now. Please just let it be. One, feel what you feel. If it gets to be too much, you can always dial it back a little bit. All right, so if it's too much to fold forward, just stay upright and keep that left knee close to the shoulder. Four, almost there. Strengthen your right leg. Five, inhale, slowly come up. Exhale there. Inhale all the way up. We're gonna come up to a kneeling, to the squat position again, sorry. Bring your feet together, open the knees a little bit, and just glide your torso a little bit through. And if you can bind your hands together like this, great. If not, just reach your hands around the shins and just pull them back. It's just gonna help your hip flexion. We'll hold this for five. One, two, almost there. Three, almost there. Four, let's do one more. Five, good job. Now we release. Now, I want you to cross your feet, lift and expand the chest. Good, exhale, come on down. Now I'm gonna come off of this. Move it over, and then roll through the same movements. I'm gonna grab my yoga strap, which is here, place it over to the side. Now we'll roll through the technique of Marichasana A. We're gonna glide your shoulder down and come to our easy position here. Find your internal rotation of your shoulders and then open the arms and internally rotate the shoulders. When you reach around, if your fingers are not nearby each other, grab a strap, hold on to it, and drop your both shoulders down. And then, as you drop the shoulders down, open the collarbone, find the appropriate amount of effort, lift your right hip off the ground, and fold forward. All right, it's looking good. Two, three, deep breaths, four, almost there, five, good job. Inhale, lift the head up, exhale, release, maintaining openness in the shoulders, Slowly come out and straighten the legs. Show you from the side, from this side. Good. So now bend the knee, watch the foot. So there's this space between the foot and the thigh. I think that's evident from the front side view, but let's make sure it's clear. Don't turn the foot out or then the hip starts to externally rotate. Don't let your knee flop out either. Don't glue the hip to the ground. If you need the blankets, set up on the blankets, all right? Then slide your torso forward. If this is where you stop, great. If not, you're gonna judge whether you can reach your hands around by if your shoulder drops below the knee. If so, keep your chest forward, open out the arms and internally rotate the shoulders, maybe binding the hands. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, fold, chin to the shin, nose to the knee or forehead to the knee. Find your breath. <laughs> this is why it's good to tie up your hair before your yoga practice. Three. We'll just leave it there for now, it's okay. Four, almost there. Mm, one more breath, five, good. Inhale, we lift the head up. Exhale, come out. And this is Mari Chasana A, we're not done yet. This is a traditional posture. I wanna now show you. So let's uh, roll through this from reclining as well. Straighten out the left leg. Slide it on forward. Well, a little bit under this. And then come on down to constructive rest position. So constructive rest is a great asana. The movement really allows the psoas
those words flow through your body from the center of the floor down your feet. So now we're going to draw both knees up into the chest. So fold under. And then uh, I want you to open the knees a little bit. Okay. And then just kind of nuggle between the thighs. Right? So the feet are a little open. We're going to hold this for five breaths. Prepare for the right back in the A position. Right? Three, so if you've been on your feet all day and you want to just get a little healthy blood circulation back, this is a great asana for that. So we'll just give a five breaths here. You could close the eyes. We gaze at the nose and gaze at the toes and just really let your nervous system just kind of wind down. Two, three, calm and steady, four, almost there, five, open the eyes. You're going to draw the right knee into your chest, grab your hands around the right knee and then just draw that right knee back and into your chest. And Move it a little over, so you're going to find the place where, oh, there's the hip flexion. And then we're going to do two things. First, your right foot's going to be pointed. I just like the way it feels a little better. If you want to flex, you can flex. Next, you're going to fold that left leg up into the chest. So you'll be able to see on the other side uh, what the movement is like, and we'll hold this for a few breaths. You could even change your grip around if the flexibility of your forward fold takes you up so we'll hold this and this is almost like a reclining version of marichasana a we can hold it in for another moment if you feel that the right knee is in a happy space you could even slide that right knee behind the shoulder and tuck it under and no stress stay for one more breath okay if the right knee is behind the shoulder, snuggle it forward. Hold on to the right knee, and this is a little harder if you can extend that left leg all the way down. Right? So it's like I said, it's a little harder. And I will hold for another five. One, so watch the alignment. So we're not aiming for in line with the hip joint. You're gonna move it a little over, which is gonna replicate that deeper hip flexion that we do for Maritas in the A position and just keep snuggling that right knee up close to the outer edge of your torso there like that. Looks good. Let's stay for one more breath, okay? And then let's set that right leg down. Go ahead. And bend your left knee to come back to constructive rest. And then we'll switch the sides. So we're gonna fold both knees up for a moment, hug that left knee in, and then straighten out the right leg. Good. Okay, so now you can see what I was doing on the left side a little bit better. So instead of just hugging the knee here, which means my torso is going to block the movement of the thigh, I'm moving the torso over to the side and I'm going to snuggle it in. Mm -hmm. So I have a said I point the feet. Honestly, I like the way it looks a little bit better, but if you do not like the way that the pointed foot feels, you're welcome to flex both feet. Again, I just really like the point. For me, it feels like I can connect better with my legs from here. Mm -hmm. So now let's fold that right leg in and you could wrap around. So here I want you to explore your flexibility. If that right hamstring is too much of aggravated right now, then you could bend that right knee a little bit or you can lessen and just stay in that first position. All right. For those of you that find the posture very, very easy, once you fold, your sacrum is going to come a little off the ground and you could even snuggle that left knee back. All right. Just make sure it doesn't point too much out to the side like this, but that the left knee just kind of hooks right behind that left shoulder, if that's appropriate. Okay. Let's stay for two breaths like this. You got one more breath. Good. Then. Snuggle it back in and keep it on the outside. So we're not up here. 
but on the outside, straighten the leg, bring it all the way down, oh, hit the altar there, sorry altar, and then I'm going to draw the knee in and then extend, and this might be a little harder, so now we're kind of releasing on the right side, particularly that right hip flexor region, which is also a good counter stretch from all those kind of deep folds that we do in the practice, just give yourself a little pull in, then let's drop that left leg down, bend the right knee, come back to constructive rest because it just feels so good. And we'll take five breaths here, and then this will be the end of our practice for today. So really enjoy these breaths and treat them as a deep space of kind of healing and restoration. Long deep breath in. Long deep breath out. One, long deep breath in, long deep breath out, three more, long deep breath in, long deep breath out, two more, long deep breath in, Long deep breath out. Last one. Long deep breath in. And out. Good. Relax the body completely. And draw the knees into the chest. Good. Give yourself a little thank you. Roll over to the side. Get a little relax. And then come on up to seated. Good. Now, when you work in your yoga practice, remember that there's this dynamic aspect of the practice, which is kind of exciting from the outside looking in, but then there's always a softer side. And you really invite you to explore the softer side. So whenever I dial things down, I always think about entering the meditative state so that by slowing the asanas down and really moving into a more quiet inner space of reflection that for me is always about using asana as a bridge to the more subtle limbs of the practice. And at the beginning of this video, I mentioned to you that ashtanga comes from the word ashtau plus anga, which is ashtanga. So when we slow the asanas down, this almost gives you more time to again work on the more subtle limbs. The more subtle limbs of the ashtanga yoga practice or when we work with what's called pratyahara, sense withdrawal. You must draw the senses into the inner experience away from the external world. We work on dharana, which is concentration of the mind, dhyana, the meditative state, and ultimately encourage deeper states of samadhi, which is an elusive state of the expanded consciousness. When we're very relaxed and open and the mind gets very absorbed in the subtle flow of energy. So, in the Ashtanga Yoga method, exploring more asana, exploring pranayama, which is the uh, movement of controlling the breath, will lead into the lifting of the veil to the more subtle uh, limbs of the practice. And I find that the more I slow everything down, the more subtle and refined my points of awareness become. Now, I also find that the dynamic aspect of the practice is a good uh, complement and a good kind of key to create a, a sense of whole being. So as we continue the challenge, I'll eventually be guiding you through a more dynamic, complete practice. And we might return to this softer, more restorative space as well. And I hope you enjoy the balance between both. Now, there are other limbs of the Ashtanga Yoga method. We begin with uh, what is traditionally called the Yamas and the Niyamas. And these are moral and ethical principles that will really guide the application of your yoga practice into your everyday life. And this is perhaps the hardest elements of the Ashtanga Yoga path. And I really encourage you to do research of how to take the lessons that you learn on your mat and bring them into your everyday life. For this is really where the magic of the yoga practice happens. If you can keep a balanced mind in difficult life circumstances, well then the yoga practice is really doing so much for you. Uh, it can change the whole direction of your life. If instead of resorting to those old habituated states of reaction, 
in those old habituated states of reactivity, then if we can choose a conscious space of you know, enlightened action, then the whole direction of our life can change. I've been practicing Ashanga Yoga for more than 20 years, and I'm going on many, many years of yoga practice in my life. And I can tell you that the experience of more peacefulness is real, and there's no magic secret to it. You don't need to be good at asana to be good at yoga. The more peace you feel in your life and in your heart, that's really where the success of the yoga practice happens. So I'll leave you with those notes and wish you a really good practice today and hope you feel a lot of peace and a lot of love coming into your heart and melting into each moment of your life. And I look forward to seeing you for practice tomorrow. So thanks everyone and namaste.